Football, we get ready for this final one of the afternoon. It's uh, 1981 to 1991 IMSA GTP cars. These boys are very, very quick. Let's see what we can do with this one. 1981 to 1991 IMSA GTP cars. Group 8A, on the pole, 99, Charles Nierberg, Dallas, Texas. 1989, All-American Racers, Eagle Mark III GTP car. Wade Carter shares that front row. He's from Woodenville, Washington, driving a 1984 Porsche 962. That's car 68. Uh, third, the third place is uh, car 16. That's Zach Brown from uh, Garforth West, Yorkshire, in England. 1986 Porsche 962. And beside him is number Base 15, is Stefano Rosina from Cumthorne, West Sussex. 86 Alba AR8. Row 3 on the inside, starting fifth car 99K, Ken Dunn from Scott Valley, California. 1990 All-American Racers Eagle Mark II GTP. Lee Gianone from uh, Yardley, Pennsylvania. It's a 1985 Porsche 962. That's car 5L. Starting seventh, number number six, Tom Dooley, Scottsdale, Arizona. 1988 Porsche 962 Group C. Beside him in, is number 44, Randall Smalley, Senior, Ocean Ridge, Florida, 1985 Jaguar XJR5. Gordon Zimmerman starts ninth in car 116. He's from Farmington, Connecticut, the 1986 Porsche 962, sharing the row, a 1985 Argo JM19 from Irvine, California, car 63, driven by Scott Spencer. Starting 11th is number 212, that's Ed, Eddie Tiveri from Irving, California, 1987 Mazda 757 Le Mans, and, and beside him, is number 14, Bruce Canopus, Scotts Valley, 1989 Porsche 962C. So number 16, Zach Brown's car from 86 Porsche 962, won its debut at 6 hours of Riverside in 86 and commencing a string of four podium finishes to start the season. Also earned wins at Charlotte and Sears Point and Price Cox finished second in the IMSA GTP Championship. And Dyson, Ra Dyson Racing won its second Porsche Cup. Went on to collect a win at Watkins Glen in 87 and another in Miami in 1988. So that's basically a three year career. Yeah, level. if I remember right, those BF Goodrich courses too, they were a team. There were two cars that they ran at the same time in both made most events. Great cars, nice graphics, beautiful livery, and very successful competitors. You know, we should launch a, a search to find out where Kemper Miller's old Red Lips, Red Lobster March ended up. Yeah, we should. There's been a conversation been buzzing around us often again all day, you know. So what did happen to that? Where was it? Where did it run? And it's got to be in. With luck, it's in a collection someplace, and somebody could actually buy it and get it back out again. Because it was just such an eye catcher, wasn't it? Oh, it certainly was. I think it was pretty successful, too, wasn't it? I yes mean, and no. It, it was a front runner. Not a lot of overall wins, I don't think. And the Lolas were dominant at that time over the marches. Nuremberg in that all-conquering, all-American Eagles racer, the number 99 car that uh, uh, Juan Manuel Fangio the second, who was the nephew of Juan Manuel Fangio, uh, just dominated 1992 and 93 seasons, drove 23 races, won 14 times, six of which were consecutive. Two of his wins came at the 1992 and 1993 12 Hours of Sebring, co driving with Andy Wallace. All right, here they go. Wow. Boy, you could sure hear Bomberito in that Mazda wind up that ro those rotaries and accelerated up the, uh, I, mean, I think that's a twin rotary car, I don't remember. I think it is actually, yes. Wasn't there one triple? I think there was. Canapa making his way through the field. Yeah, not wasting much time. There's Canapa already making moves. Uh, he shows on our grid sheet is starting in the 12th spot. 
already moved up several. We'll see where he is scored at the completion of the first lap. Looks like Kenneth is up to third, just eyeballing him. We'll have to wait and see what happens when they come up to start finish straight. It is the first lap. Okay, Nimberg in the lead. Bomberito. Kenneth is third. We were right. He went from 12th to third on the first lap in the 14 car. He wants to get up the front and play with Nierberg, I'm sure, in that 99 All-American Racer Eagle GTP car. Bomberito is going to present a challenge for him, however, in that Mazda 767B. But that's the next person for Canepa to overtake. He's working on that right now, looking inside. And he makes the pass and moves himself up in the second as they go into turn five and start up the hill. So 12th to second in a lap and a half. And now he is in pursuit of your race leader, car number 99, Charles Nierberg of Dallas, Texas, in that 1989 All-American Racers Eagle Mark III GTP car. It's going to be a battle. I'd say so. And I would think that Nierberg expects to see him in his mirrors. He's not going to be surprised at Canopus closing. Well, it's not a big field, so they've got plenty of room. I would eyeball him at about seven seconds back and they're at almost identical lap times, 126.7, 126.6. Can't have the quicker of the two by a tenth of a second. And actually, five seconds faster than anybody else. Well, the two of them, yeah. Juan <laughs> Marino's at a 131. Your third place, Carter, 202. Carter, fourth in the BF Goodrich delivery portion, number 68. That's a 84,962, and Dobson in the 99K running in fifth spot. That's the All-American Racers Eagle Mark II GCP. There's a difference between Mark II and Mark III, right? What's the, how many seconds? Ten, ten seconds a lap. <laughs> is it the car? Is it the driver? You don't know. 134.3 for the Mark II, 126.7 for the Mark III. Must have done a lot of improvement to that car. <laughs> it sounds like it. Definitely possible. So I actually had a friend who raced with the Isle of Man, the TT, in the, in the early 70s. And he said he was competitive with a TD1A, and then the TD1B came out in the Yamaha, and he said, no, I couldn't touch it. Like, he was very upset about that. Nierberg now drops to 1 minute 24.4 seconds. Oh. He's about 1.7 seconds quicker than Canepa on that last lap. So this is the battle at the top between 99 and 14. Yeah. The All-American Racers Eagle Mark III GTP car and the Porsche 962. Both cars built the same year, 1989. Well, so how did they stack up in the day? Do you remember when they were new? That Eagle was a dominant car. It, uh, just, well, you, you heard me. Yeah, 23 races, he won 16. Twice he won three in a row. Oh, there's your answer. It was, uh, it was just a killer car. Very, very competitive. And then Mazda had their own GTP car. They built two. Pete Halsmer was driving for them. And one of them just caught fire. And just was completely destroyed somewhere. Wow. 145 MPH under the bridge for Chuck Nierberg and a 
23 laps. Ken Nibber continues to increase his pace now under a minute 24 at a 123.9. Canapa last time by was almost five seconds slower at a 128.7. I don't think he got held up by traffic. There's not that much traffic out there. Maybe he's just backed off. Decided to save the car. Doesn't look like he's going too quickly from the video shot we see, but on a telephoto lens, it can be very deceptive. As you look at the ride height on that thing, it's really across the face, and it's almost glued to the ground. Yeah, Bomberito's close right up behind him now as they come out of 10 and go into 11. Bomberito's going to dive down the outside. Interesting choice. And here comes Bomberito. He's moved up in the second place to the Mazda 767B, car number 202. Canapa's lap times continue to plummet 134 last time. Won't be long before Carter catches him. Carter's turning 127. Well, he showed Nierberg what he's got, and then Nierberg left. He got down to the, they were at 126s. Then Nierberg got into the 124s and now got down into the 123s and now he's backed it off again. He's up to 125, and, but that's certainly not slow. As you'd indicated, what was the trap speed you saw, 140 plus? It's a Group 44 Jag, always a pretty car. Randall Smalley Sr. driving it, XJR5. Currently running eighth. Former Group 44 IMSA GTP race car raced in 85 and 86. Bob Tooley, is with, uh, he's the man in Group 4. Raced all the stuff for British Leyland, for MGs, the Triumphs, and then Jag. All with that green and white livery. And there goes Canepa, he's taking the pit exit coming down the hill up by the scoring try line. And he's going to the back paddock. Checkered flag is out for Charles Nierberg, who takes it for the win in the final race of the day.